January 10th, the United States convenes a meeting of the UN Security Council to discuss the dictatorial alliance unfolding now, North Korea supplying missiles to Russia. Good afternoon, this is Henry Keane on ATV English, bringing you the hard truth in easy terms for the whole free world directly from Ukraine. Bare facts, Russia is using North Korean ballistic missiles to attack Ukrainian cities. Another fact that is drawn out of the previous one, Russia has become dependent on external supplies of ammunition, while both terrorist dictatorial regimes, Korean and Russian, have become sponsors of brutal criminal aggression against Ukraine. Ukraine is grateful to the United States for its unwavering support in the United Nations Security Council and other international forums in detecting, exposing and countering Moscow's attempts of armament so as to wage an aggressive war further. The North Korean regime has also resulted to an escalation on the line of demarcation with South Korea and openly threatens war against the states of the Asia-Pacific region. An absolute copy of Putin's behavior, isn't it not? Russia same blatantly neglects its duties as a permanent member of the UN Security Council. It's both waging an invasive war and helping to prepare other dictatorial regimes for wage new ones. The only question I have in this regard is what kind of a security it is if a terrorist country like Putin's Russia is still in the UN Security Council? Germany is discussing Taurus cruise missiles for Ukraine to be or not to be. Since the very beginning of the full-scale Russian invasion of Ukraine, Germany has turned from one of the most restrained countries in terms of providing weapons to Ukraine into one of the leaders of military assistance to our state. I was visiting my German parts of the family just recently for Christmas and New Year, and I heard why Ukraine needs those terrorists, people asked me. Why, they asked, and had a glass of champagne. Well, dear Germans, with all due respect, the obvious answer is we need to survive, you see. We also want to have a safe Christmas and New Year and have a champagne, mistletoes and not missiles. We want the best of us, our men and women, home, and not freezing in trenches and having their limbs turned off by Russian Christmas fireworks. We need our Tauruses, your Tauruses, to effectively destroy Russian military targets and disrupt their logistics on our land from a distance, as remotely as we can, which in turn will allow us to gain an advantage at the front. Taurus missiles in Ukraine are supported by German politicians Manfred Weber, the leader of the European People's Party, Marie-Agnes Strack-Zimmermann, chair of the Defence Committee of the Bundestag, Zara Nanni, the spokesperson for Defence of the Greens, Roderick Kaiswetter, the CDU foreign policy expert, and others. Taurus missiles in Ukraine will help to stop the war, not pausing it, not appeasing the Soviet monstrosity of Putin, no, not giving him a respite. German Taurus will help us to win the war, thus adverting the threat of weakening of NATO's eastern flank and a new round of Russian aggression, in particular against Moldova and Baltic states. So, dear Germans, please let me put that in easy terms for you. The Ukraine braucht Langstreckenraketen, um die russische Aggression abzuwehren und unsere Städte, unsere Bevölkerung und unsere Infrastruktur zu schützen. Also müssen Sie das nicht tun, denn wenn wir scheitern, ist genau das der Fall. Mit freundlichen Grüßen, Menschen der Ukraine. Russian cities are suffering from cold. Some things really are forever, right? No one expected a winter in Russia again. Heating in Moscow and St. Petersburg in conditions of severe frost just fails to work properly. I mean, this is what Russia calls a civilization. This is what it is bringing to Ukraine and Europe and wherever it sets its foot. All systems, civilian, social, economical, heating ones, just fail. Failing state, indeed. Those acute domestic Russian problems, who cares? It is warm in the Kremlin, right? and in all of Putin's underground bunkers just as well, and in all of his mind-boggling expensive palaces around the globe, it's warm in Nice, Paris and London, where the Russian oligarchs and elite spends billions of dollars. I stress out now dollars, not rubles, as the Kremlin regime spends billions of rubles on absolutely pointless, economically devastating aggression against Ukraine. I know Russians like to use this term regime. 
just as well, addressing Zelensky's administration, calling it Kiev regime. So there are two regimes, Kiev and Moscow one. But there is a great deal of a difference between the two. We in Ukraine are okay with our Kiev regime. It is the regime we have chosen to fight Russian Tsar Putin and his army of orcs. This is our choice. So Kyiv regime is all Ukrainian regime. And when we say the Kremlin regime, we don't think about all Russia. We think of only one man who usurped power, illegally amended the constitution to match his needs. We think of only one man and his one-man show, a deadly, devastating war he unleashed upon Ukraine. And we have all the rights to fight back with all the means our military command might find necessary. But as we clearly see, Russian energy infrastructure is just failing on its own, even without any massive missile strikes and attacks, like the ones Russia is hammering our cities, for example, with an attempt to disable our heating system. You see, Russia's failure to address its own critical problems is yet another logical consequence of Putin's aggression. It consists of two major issues. First is a shortage of professionals who have been taken to the front lines in Ukraine instead doing what they can do best domestically. Second is a lack of technology due to international sanctions. Well, it seems that the Kremlin has given a totally new meaning to the term Cold War, wanting to unleash a cold as a weapon onto Europe and Europe and us in Ukraine, but the Russians themselves have fallen victims to their wise Russian Tsar's plan. Well, what can I say? From Russia with love, right? That was all for today. It was Henry Keane on UATV English and yet another attempt of bringing hard truth in easy terms for the whole free world directly from Ukraine. Please do not hesitate to like, comment and subscribe. Your opinion matters. Stay safe and turn for more already tomorrow. See you.